Here we are on the Manly Ferry. Here comes the Opera House. covered in tiles. People think it's painted, but it's not. It's tiny ceramic tiles. So they suck shine in the sun. Just like sails. Sails on the boat. Very quiet over there. All along the opera quay there and that's the opera bar where you see those umbrellas. That would be seething usually and ordinary times but uh, no more until we get a vaccine. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? That's the Botanic Gardens and that tower is the um, Tower of Government House just disappearing behind the trees. In the old days, there was a fort, Fort Macquarie, right here on this spot. And eventually that was pulled down and they built a tram shed, a big tram shed where all the trams slept for the night. And they came down that hill, down Macquarie Street, into, a, into the tram shed. Now if you notice there's a fair degree colour inside the sails, something I didn't really realise, I hadn't seen for it before. Behind those windows are the bars in the opera, in the opera house which is the left hand side that you see and the right hand side is the concert hall. Sydney Concert Hall, which is at the moment being entirely renovated, new acoustics put in. Of course there's the Opera Theatre and nothing's happening in there either. It's a pretty gloomy. Now we're coming round into Farm Cove. This is where the first farm settlers came here in 1788. They managed to farm up there on the, which is now Botanic Gardens. And behind the trees is Government House. Farm Cove, which is again circular, like Circular Quay. And we come around to the promontory there. This is Macquarie's chair, that's called. And back in the days of Macquarie, Governor Macquarie, his wife would take a carriage from Government House all the way around to sit and gaze out over the harbour and write her journal. So it's called Mrs. Macquarie's chair. And behind that, you'll see the ships Lord at Garden Island, which is where the Australian Navy is based. Garden Island used to be a, an island, but it's now joined to the rest of the harbour's foreshore. And as we come around the corner, you'll see the beginnings of Woolloomooloo. I couldn't say Woolloomooloo, I had to practice it when I first knew I was coming to live in Sydney. <coughs> Don't ask me to spell it. And there's Woolloomooloo. Russell Crowe used to live in the apartments that you see just appearing around the corner. He had an apartment right at the very end. And the rest of it is now luxury apartments and also a luxury hotel. You see the high rise there of um, King's Cross, which is the red light area of Sydney, the Soho of Sydney.
coming round now into Rose Bay. It's a series of bays all the way around the harbour. And in Rose Bay, there's a um, a uh, flying boat. A flying boat key. You can take fl fl uh, flying boat um, aerial trips up and down the harbour and also up to Palm Beach, which is where they film Home and Away. I may have been wrong when I told you that was Rose Bay, it could be Double Bay. Uh, is it Double Bay? I'm not, I'm not sure, sorry about that. Helicopter making a lot of noise. Yeah, I'm afraid that's Rush Cutters Bay. Double Bay is on the other side of the harbour. Rush Cutters Bay, Rose Bay. And then right the way around to Watson's Bay where there's a lovely fish restaurant. School holidays. So everyone's heading for Manly. Manly is the Brighton of Sydney. Basically, it was even conceived as that by a gentleman back in the 1800s. He saw the potential of Manly because it had two beaches. It had an ocean beach and a harbour beach and a course, course in between. And a lot of the names in Manly are Reminiscent of Brighton, Steen, for instance, or Stein. Can't work out whether it's Steen or Stein. I think I get corrected here. It's called Steen, or is it called the Old Stein? I'm not sure. <coughs> All around the harbour. During the Second World War, there were gun emplacements. There's gun emplacements across there. Uh, there was a fear that the Japanese would invade Australia and um, sail up into the city of Sydney. So there were submarine pens, submarine wires that ran across the harbour, and submarine nets, and then guns pointed on these headlands, especially on the north north side, not so much on the south side for some reason. Luxury apartments, as far as you can see. Shark Island, uninhabited of course, tiny island, you could actually get ferries out there at some stage and go for picnics, it's a lovely little island. We're looking at Vaucluse, which is a very exclusive area of Sydney, eastern suburbs, and over the top of that hill would be Bondi. Coming up to the head now, you can see in the distance there, just past the, um, the wake of that little speedboat, there's a gap there which leads out into the Pacific Ocean, and we call it the heads, they call it the heads, North Head and South Head. So the furthest one away will be North Head, the one on the left, and the one on the right will be South Head. And again, normal times and I don't think it's going to happen this year. Boxing Day we have the Sydney Hobart Yacht Race which starts in the harbour and goes out through the heads and turns right down through the Tasman Sea all the way to Hobart. I somehow don't think that's going to be happening this year. You see there are beaches all the way along here. Now we're going the 
swell's increasing because we're going towards the heads now, past the heads. So we get a swell coming in from the ocean. Across there behind, we see um, that area there is called Clifton Gardens. That's where the Navy, there's a Navy base there. now, that's North Head, and beyond that is the ocean. in the distance. Getting a bit rocky. 